If you're the type of rider that prefers to head out on a road trip with your fingers crossed and a AAA card, this video might not be for you. Just keep your cell phone charged and stay close to civilization and I'm sure you'll be fine. But for those of you that want to be more independent and self-reliant, say because you're gonna be on the road for thousands of miles or plan to get pretty remote, keep watching. Today, we are outlining a comprehensive road trip and adventure toolkit for your motorcycle. Let's open up the shop manual. This episode of the shop manual is brought to you by Kershaw, my go-to unboxing knife and a tool I carry with me everywhere. Get 25% off your order at kershawknives.com with code 1TSM25. In a previous episode, we discussed a basic compact toolkit designed for around town use. So you get home or get to work when something minor happens to your bike. But what if you're gonna be on the road or maybe even off road for days or weeks at a time? Then you're gonna need a more complete kit so you can maintain and repair your bike throughout your travels. So what should you bring? This is what I'd like to have, but you need a chase truck to haul it. So this, is what I actually carry. The specifics of the kit are going to be different for every bike and every adventure, but a good way to identify your foundational tools is to tackle your bike's first major service. That likely entails an oil and filter change, air filter and spark plug inspection or replacement, chain adjustment, brake check, cable adjustment, etc. In fact, go ahead and give your bike a thorough top to bottom tune up and inspection and make a list of every tool and all the supplies you use. This is going to accomplish two things. First, you're gonna have a very solid rundown of the specific tools and procedures needed to get pretty deep into your bike. Second, your motorcycle is now tuned up. And honestly, the best way to prevent issues while traveling is to make sure your bike is dialed in before you leave. After all, an ounce of prevention, it's worth a pound of cure. And since you don't wanna be carrying 50 pounds of cure on your bike, you'll need to assess everything you used and figure out what you can do without and then figure out how to condense everything else. For instance, sourcing combination wrenches instead of one of each size, or carrying specific Torx and hex keys instead of a full 3 8 drive set. And rather than a 16 ounce can of chain lube, you carry a travel size can. You get the idea. The goal is to keep size and weight to a minimum while maximizing function and versatility. Now that you have a solid foundation for addressing regular maintenance and adjustments, we wanna turn our attention toward when things go wrong. You can't anticipate every possible scenario, but there are some common ones that we can prepare for, and we can even break them down into categories. Whatever style wheels and tires you're rolling on, being able to fix the flat and remove your wheels and tires is something you should be equipped to do. I carry rope plugs and a modified reamer and installer for tubeless tires, plus a patch kit for tubes. I like these Park Tools bicycle kits because they're compact and the box protects the tube of glue so it doesn't get popped or punctured. I stash a valve core tool and a razor blade in here as well. When I'm on a big trip, I pack a 12 volt compressor rather than a hand pump or CO2 canisters. I use the bag to hold a tire gauge and the rest of my tire repair stuff as well as a few extra rags since there's space and it keeps things from rattling around. For wheel and tire removal, these combo tire spoons from Motion Pro are my go-to because they pull double duty with an integrated wrench and adapter for removing axle nuts. These are a whole lot better than hauling around a ratchet, 3 8 to half inch adapter, a heavy steel socket, and separate tire irons. And if you're rolling on tube wheels, pack an extra tube. For enduro and ADV riding, I'll carry a 21 inch tube since it'll work for the front or you can stuff it into an 18 inch rear in a pinch. For the front wheel, this combo tool will fit all internal hex axles and you can spin it with a 3 8 drive ratchet or a wrench. They come in steel and aluminum, so make sure you're going with the latter to save weight. As for stands, I've had to get creative with a stump or logs or worst case scenario, you might have to lay the bike on its side. I'm not concerned with carrying extra gas or oil, but I do want to be able to transfer gas into my tank or someone else's, and I think we can all agree that it's important to keep oil in your engine if you punch a hole in your crankcase. Packing six or more feet of quarter inch hose will allow you to siphon fuel from another bike or even a car. A larger hose will transfer gas faster, but takes up more space. 
As for patching catastrophic holes that you've punched in your clutch cover or radiator, that's where this stuff comes in. JB Weld failed miserably in our thread repair video, but when it comes to scabbing stuff on the side of the road, JB Quick and JB Steel Stick, which is more of a putty, can save the day. I also keep a few washers and coins handy to help span and reinforce especially large repairs. And because I'm somewhat obsessed with saving space, I'll cut the stick and squeeze out half of the tubes to reduce the quantity to what I'll need for one or two repair jobs. I also carry a small tube of RTV sealant, and I stick all these tubes in plastic bags just in case they leak a rupture. JB Weld has lots of uses, but it can't fix everything. That's why I carry duct tape, electrical tape, spare hardware, safety wire, and lots of zip ties. Zip ties are worth their weight in gold for securing stuff, whether it's a dangling license plate or holding a shredded tire to a rim. Just make sure you buy quality ones since cheap zip ties are usually brittle and have weak heads that won't hold tension. Pro tip, a short section of zip tie works great for mixing and applying JB Weld. If your bike has a drive shaft, good for you. You can skip this section. For the rest of you running a chain and sprockets, those parts will require some amount of attention during an extended trip. I generally give the chain some TLC at the end of every day of a road trip, since it's easier to wipe off a little grime every day than it is to scrub off a ton of grime once a week. I just mist a rag with WD-40, use it to wipe down the chain, and then apply a little bit of lube. Remember, with modern O-ring chains, the most critical lube is already sealed inside the links. And since you already have the tools for removing your rear wheel, you've got what you need to adjust the chain slack if things get a little loose during your travels. Also, if I'm running a clip-type master link instead of a rivet link, I'll carry a spare. Now, WD-40 is an effective solvent, so it works well for cleaning stuff, and chain lube works pretty well for lubing other things like lever pivots and cables. I also carry one of these small bottles of silicone lube like you get with Shoei and Arai helmets. This stuff is excellent for lubricating zippers, like on your luggage or your jacket, and it also works well for anything rubber, so think forcing a carburetor or throttle body back into its rubber boot. Then, there's stuff that defies a category. This T-handle from BikeMaster has more leverage than a regular 3 8 inch ratchet, and the two drive ends mean you don't need to carry a separate extension. An adjustable wrench fits a bunch of different size fasteners, but it's also super handy for straightening bent levers, and you can use the open end to get more leverage on hex and torx keys. These are called van pliers. They're super versatile and easily the best set of pliers I've owned. I also pack a set of vice grips, which can be used as an emergency foot peg or lever. A length of nylon webbing works as a toe strap. I also like to pack a length of paracord, because you always need rope. And make sure you have a knife or blade of some sort. And if it's got more than one function, like this Kershaw Shuffle DIY, that's even better. I'll also bring a hacksaw blade, just in case I need to cut or otherwise modify something metal. If you're headed really far off the beaten path, especially if you're going off-road on something like a backroad discovery route, consider adding replacement levers and cables to your kit, as well as a small bottle of liquid dish soap to help you pop stiff ADV tires back onto the bead. If you have extra room, a power pack with integrated jumper cables is undeniably handy for keeping your phone and other stuff charged. Finally, while first aid supplies are definitely essential, that's kind of a subject for another video. However, on the topic of medical emergencies, I do roll with a Garmin InReach Mini GPS device. This is an expensive piece of equipment and it requires a monthly subscription, but if you need emergency help ASAP when you're way out in the boonies, you're gonna want one of these. Last but not least, you need something to put all this equipment in. You can chuck it all in a helmet bag if you want, but I prefer something with a little more organization, and I like a pack or a roll that will also serve as a work surface when I'm working on the bike. In fact, I've even put a disc magnet in the pocket of this climb pack to hold loose fasteners that I've taken off the bike. Also, don't be afraid to separate things based on task. For instance, my tire repair kit and my chain care stuff live in their own bags and can reside in separate portions of my luggage. 
Likewise, I might take the toe strap and the siphon and some other less commonly used items and put them somewhere else so that my main toolkit can remain streamlined. Okay, that is a lot of tools and equipment, and if you want the complete list, it is down in the description. However, there is one final thing I would recommend for people out on an adventure, and it's actually something you can't buy. It's the right attitude. You've gotta be willing to get creative and improvise when things go wrong. The fix won't always be quick, it won't always be easy, and it won't always be pretty, but with the stuff in this kit and the right approach, you probably won't get stranded.